Welcome to this mini tutorial on the recommended settings for Star Trek New Horizons. The developers of this game have stated that they have some recommended settings and starts for Star Trek New Horizons. Let's jump in by pressing the New Game button. This is the Empire selection screen. For this step, you can pick any Empire that you would like. All of the following steps in this video will be the same regardless of who you choose. For now, we will choose United Earth. And here's the screen we're most interested in at the moment. At the top is the galaxy setup option. By default, the Milky Way galaxy is selected. This is a large map that has a lot of Star Trek lore and flavored events. This map is very large with over 1400 stars. If this is either too large for you or your computer, you can choose the next option, which is the medium sized version of the same map. If you do not want to worry about the Borg or Dominion on the map, you can also choose the Alpha slash Beta Quadrant map, either the large version with 850 plus stars or the smaller version at 500 plus stars. Do you only want to play in the Gamma Quadrant? There's a map for that too. The same is also true of the Delta Quadrant. Additionally, there are also two Mirror Universe maps, one for the entire galaxy and one for the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. Finally, there is a Birth of the Federation map, reminiscent of the Birth of the Federation video game, and then the remaining maps here are from the base game Stellaris, circling back to this original Milky Way map. Underneath this section, we come to the universe sliders. The first one is the tech tradition cost, which affects how much time is needed for these concepts. The higher the slider, the higher the cost. The recommended setting here is 1x. Below this is the Habitable Worlds slider. The higher the slider, the higher number of habitable worlds that are, will be generated. Note that the more planets that can be colonized, the larger the number of pops that can be created in the galaxy and the more calculations that your computer has to do. This can be an issue for lower end or older computers. The, the developers recommend 1x here as well, but changing this will not alter gameplay drastically. However, it will alter how many computations your computer has to does per the number of pops. So please keep that in mind. The next slider is the victory year. This is when the game will automatically end and declare a victor based on their overall score. This slider increases in increments and can be also set to off at the very right. By default, it is the year 2450 right here which is also the recommended setting from the devs. However, as you've seen, this can be changed. Note, however, that once you have finished the research tree, you will only be researching repeatable technologies. So if you do not finish by 2450, or if you find that you have finished by this time and your victory year is not off or not set to a later period of time, you may find that you no longer need to do any research or you have reached the repeatable technologies, and that's the only thing that you are researching. The slider below this is the difficulty level slider, or the difficulty level options, and is one of the most important settings here for Star Trek New Horizons. For a good game where the AI are able to use their resources, um, use their buildings, can build buildings, and really where they can actually compete with you, this slider or this kind of option setting should be set at either Admiral or Grand Admiral, which are the highest two difficulty settings. If you choose a lower setting, it is unlikely that the AI will be able to build ships, develop planets, expand, and other things that they are meant to. At this point, do not worry that it says Admiral. Admiral in Stellaris is extremely difficult. Admiral in Star Trek New Horizons is not as difficult as that, and it simply gives the AI the ability to actually perform correctly. Another option that is very important is the scaling difficulty. This means that the empires start off easy and then get harder as the game progresses. So this would be the same thing here as starting off at the cadet difficulty and then eventually moving up to the Grand Admiral difficulty throughout the course of one game. For Star Trek New Horizons, this should be set to off. So as I mentioned, if you have anything lower than Admiral here, the AI won't be able to function. And that's very true of the scaling difficulty as well. So they wouldn't be able to function and only towards the very end of your playthrough would they actually be able to, to function and to do everything. And that's not a very interesting game for you. 
The next option is the AI aggressiveness. Here you have three options. You have low, you have normal, and you have high. For Star Trek New Horizons, this should be set to at least normal. If you would like extra aggressive neighbours, for example, a warlike Romulan Empire or Klingons who don't stop attacking anyone and everyone that they can, set this to high. Note that high aggression really is very high and should only be used by experienced players. It's very likely at high aggression that you will always or almost always be at war. Below this is the Iron Man mode. The Iron Man mode is the same for Star Trek New Horizons as it is in the base game Stellaris, and you can set this as you would like. Note that if it is on, save games will overwrite each other and you will only be able to load the latest save game of your playthrough. Also something to note is that as Star Trek New Horizons is a mod for the base game, enabling Iron Man mode here will not let you reach the achievements in the base game Stellaris, and there are no achievements for this mod. The last two sliders in the settings for the map options are the logistic growth ceiling and the growth required scaling. For these, the default options are 1.5x and 0.25x respectively. So the higher the logistic growth ceiling is, the faster pops will grow. However, the opposite is true for this slider here. So the higher the growth required scaling is, the slower pops will grow on medium to large planets or planets with medium to large population sizes. Once you've set everything here as you would like it, which I generally go for the settings that you see at the moment or maybe normal here, then the next thing to do is to press play. There is one more set of settings that we need to talk about, which is after the game has loaded. When you first begin playing as the Empire you selected, you will have a pop-up that asks about the start conditions. This is usually seen after two other pop-ups. So for example, here is your race um, or Empire pop-up that tells you about them. Then you'll have a pop-up about kind of the new features within the latest edition of Star Trek New Horizons. And then afterwards, you have a pop-up about the start conditions. Here, you will see that there are several options. So generally, for most people, I would recommend the default option, the recommended option. Default 100% of empires. This means that um, every empire or every race that is in the game that has been programmed into Star Trek New Horizons will be shown no matter what. However, for um, lower end machines or for older machines, you might find that this is too much for your computer to handle. And the devs have realized that and have created some other options. Let's start with these three here. So developer chosen. If you find that choosing the recommended option is too much for your computer to handle, this is usually because of the calculations required for POPs. So those individual units of population within the game. There are three different um, sizes here of or number of empires that you can you can um, add to your game. So rather than going for 100 percent, you could go for 25, 50 or 75 percent respectively. These presets make sure to include the empires that you know, love and would like to see from Star Trek, including people or races like the Borg, Dominion, Romulans, Cardassians, Federation, Klingons, etc. For these ones, it would make um, those races that you are less familiar with a lower priority. Things like the Kobali or some of the Dominion ones, um, the Dominion members, for example, that you might see in one episode in the shows and never hear from ever again. So that has those ones prioritized, the major ones you would like to see. Down here, these three options are the same thing, but without priority. So the these empires will be chosen randomly, completely. So you might, for example, have a playthrough without the Dominion or without the Borg. Or, for example, the Kobali are a major empire and the Borg are a much smaller single system primitive empire or minor empire. There are also two further options from the developers. And that is here, for example, one um, that turns all of the primitive powers into minor powers and one that turns one of the minor powers into primitive powers. 
Finally, for those who really have a very low-end performance or low-end machine, there is a special blend for lower-end machines that are here. Um, the minor empires, those that do not grow, do not expand, um, are static. So they, will, for example, will be given their pops, and that's it. They don't actually expand, uh, which means a much better performance in terms of computations that your computer has to do. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial on the recommended settings for Star Trek New Horizons. If you have, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions about the recommended settings, please feel free to write me a comments below. I will try and answer those and get to them as quickly as possible. Also, if you have any questions about anything else within the game, um, please do look at the playlist that this video is in. You can see this playlist either at the very end of the video or a link to it will also be in the description below. And I'm creating these tutorials with Cornish Ratbeard. So some of the tutorials will be on his channel and some of the tutorials will be on my channel. Again, if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. Um, please also subscribe to our channels and we hope to see you around for more tutorials for Star Trek New Horizons. Bye for now.